shortly after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un embraced Russian President Vladimir Putin upon his arrival at Pyongyang's airport on June 19, the two leaders shared their pent-up inmost thoughts and agreed to develop their nation's relations. The North Korean state media said. Mr. Putin, who arrived in the pre-dawn hours, is on his first trip to the North Korean capital in 24 years, a visit likely to reshape decades of Russian-North Korea relations at a time when both countries face international isolation. The country's partnership is an engine for accelerating the building of a new multipolar world and Mr. Putin's visit demonstrates the invincibility and durability of their friendship and unity. North Korea's state news agency KCNA said. North Korea-Russia relations have emerged as a strong strategic fortress for preserving international justice, peace and security. KCNA said. Moscow and Pyongyang have been allies since North Korea's founding after World War II and have drawn even closer since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022 led to the West isolating Mr. Putin internationally. Russia has used its warming ties with North Korea to needle Washington, while heavily sanctioned North Korea has won political backing and promises of economic support and trade from Moscow. The United States and its allies say they fear Russia could provide aid for North Korea's missile and nuclear programs, which are banned by UN Security Council resolutions, and have accused Pyongyang of providing ballistic missiles and artillery shells that Russia has used in its war in Ukraine. Moscow and Pyongyang have denied weapons transfers. Mr. Kim greeted Mr. Putin, they shook hands, embraced and talked beside the Russian leader's plane, and then the pair rode in the same limousine to the Kamsusan State Guest House. Passing through charmingly lit streets of Pyongyang at night, the top leaders exchanged their pent-up inmost thoughts and opened their minds to more surely develop the DPRK-Russia relations. KCNA reported, using the initials of North Korea's official name. The agenda on June 19 includes one-on-one -on -one discussions between the two leaders, as well as a gala concert, state reception, honor guards, document signings, and a statement to the media, Russia's Interfax news agency quoted Mr. Putin's foreign policy adviser Yuri Ashikov saying, in a signal that Russia, a veto-wielding member of the UN Security Council, is reassessing its entire approach to North Korea, Mr. Putin praised Pyongyang ahead of his arrival for resisting what he said was US economic pressure, blackmail and threats. In an article carried on the front page of North Korea's main ruling party newspaper, he promised to develop alternative trade and mutual settlement mechanisms not controlled by the West and build an equal and indivisible security architecture in Eurasia. Mr. Putin's article implies that there is an opportunity for North Korea's economic growth within an anti-West economic bloc led by Russia, which is a message that is likely appealing to Mr. Kim. Wrote Ms. Rachel Minyang Lee, an analyst with the 38 North program in Washington. If Pyongyang views Russia as a viable longer-term partner for improving its economy, as irrational as this may seem to some, there is even less of an incentive for it to try to improve relations with the United States. She said in a report. Mr. Putin also issued a presidential order on the eve of the visit saying Moscow was looking to sign a comprehensive strategic partnership treaty with North Korea. Mr. Ashikov said it would include security issues. Mr. Ashikov said the deal would not be directed against any other country, but would outline prospects for further cooperation. The United States voiced concern on June 17 about Mr. Putin's trip because of the security implications for South Korea as well as Ukraine. The two Koreas have remained technically at war since their 1950-1953 conflict and the border dividing them is one of the most heavily fortified in the world.
We know North Korean ballistic missiles are still being used to hit Ukrainian targets and there could be some reciprocity here that could affect security on the Korean peninsula. U.S. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby told reporters. Highlighting those security concerns, South Korea said its troops fired warning shots at soldiers from the north who briefly crossed the border on June 18 and then retreated. The South's military said it believed the North Korean soldiers accidentally crossed as they were fortifying the border, but said some of them were wounded after detonating landmines. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said Mr. Putin's trip showed how he was dependent on authoritarian leaders. Their closest friends and the biggest supporters of the Russian war effort, war of aggression, are North Korea. Iran and China, Mr. Stoltenberg said. Ukraine's Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba urged the international community to counter the lonely bromance between Mr. Putin and Mr. Kim by increasing arms supplies to Kyiv. The best way to respond to it is to continue strengthening the diplomatic coalition for just and lasting peace in Ukraine and delivering more patriots and ammunition to Ukraine. Mr. Kuleba told AFP. North Korea is eager for high-end military technology to advance its nuclear, missile, satellite and nuclear-powered submarine programs, according to experts. Given North Korea's chronic resource shortages, Pyongyang is expected to discuss ways to strengthen cooperation in areas such as tourism, agriculture and mining in exchange for providing military supplies to Russia. A report from Seoul Base Institute for National Security Strategy INSS said. Other issues, including cooperation on the deployment of North Korean workers or the supply of energy to North Korea, both of which would violate sanctions, are also likely to be discussed behind the scenes, INSS researcher Kim Sangbae wrote.